Hi, I'm Steve Hunt, and I am accompanied by Joey Day, and we are just going to dive into a discussion. Uh, Joey, you said you had something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so um, I watched one of your earlier videos that was on the power of positive affirmations, um, and uh, you know, you and I have discussed some of these topics before, and um, you know, I think there's a there was another video that you posted recently that was on the the law of attraction and how it actually works. And uh, in my mind, the the positive affirmation stuff and the law of attraction is all kind of um, of a piece, right? It's of a certain worldview, I think. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard for me to kind of divide those two things apart. Um, but, uh, for this conversation, I actually haven't watched your video on the law of attraction. So I, I don't have anything to say about that, but, but I think the reason why, um, I feel so strongly, um, negative toward the things that you say about positive affirmations is because it's all kind of connected with, with that idea. And I, I disagree with that idea um, pretty fundamentally. Like my worldview is just opposed to that whole idea. Um, you know, well, I'm, specifically, I'm, you're negative about affirmative affir, 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 affirmation. <laughs> okay, right, no, you, right. But it's because you say your your worldview uh, doesn't agree with the law of attraction mindset that we. Because I would I would try to separate it. For that the law of attraction is the idea that we, with our beliefs and our thoughts, create who we are and how we interpret the world and the experience that we are having uh, is is a is a it connected with our beliefs and that and then affirmations specifically speaking positive things to yourself is a way to reprogram those beliefs so that you attract. Uh, a, mm -hmm. a better life or a better understanding. So, uh, to me, that yeah, the the law is one thing, and that's what you feel like you fundamentally agree disagree with in your right. personal theology. Uh, and then affirmations are are a tool towards helping you um, with your belief system, right? So, all right. right. So what are, and yeah, so, so talk to me about. I it. watched I watched that video, you know, and a lot of these feelings of of uh, just vehement almost violent disagreement you know were welling up in me the whole time i was watching the video we have a lot of and, vehement violent disagreement feelings and yet we love each other dearly that's great so. absolutely absolutely 100 percent um and I, I found myself just kind of with a cloud over me for m minutes maybe hours i don't remember the exact it was a couple weeks ago so i don't but i started to think about like is there anything about what he's saying that that is applicable to my worldview that 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 I can that I can um, agree with. You know what I mean? And the thought struck me that there's this concept in some of the um, reformed evangelical Christian circles that I that I am in. Um, there's this concept of preaching the gospel to yourself, right? And a lot of people memorize Bible verses about the gospel to preach to themselves, and it's a way. Um, it's a way of kind of reminding yourself of, of things. And it's, it's basically just like affirmations. Um, and I think in my worldview, it functions vastly differently than the way I think affirmations function in, in your worldview. Um, but, but I, they're no less important, you know? And, um, so I've actually gone back and read, there was a book I read many, many years ago called The Holiness of God by Jerry Bridges. And um, he doesn't talk about preaching the gospel to yourself in that book, but it was one of his follow-up books called uh, The Disciplines of Grace, where he talks about preaching to yourself. And the only reason I picked up his earlier book before I read the, the, the follow-up was, you know, because they're kind of related books. And I had forgotten that I had read his earlier book. And so I, I was reading through, I made it about halfway through the book before I realized, man, this book just seems really familiar to me. And I went and looked it up and sure enough, I had read it like 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> and so I finished reading it and now I'm reading... The Disciplines of Grace. Um, I, I, a lot of my thoughts on this are still not fully formed necessarily. So I don't know what, what more can I, I can really say on can this. I ask a couple questions. I mean, how, how does one in, okay. How do you come to believe the word of God in your, from your worldview? 
Uh, are you talking about epistemology? How do I know what I know? No. Okay. So how do you how do you gain more faith? How do you really become convinced of mm -hmm. the truth of the gospel and and gain faith in Jesus Christ? How do you obtain? Um, that? Well, there's a verse in Romans. You know how do how will they know unless they hear? Like I think I think we 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 come to understand it more and more. We come to believe it more and more by reading the word or hearing it preached. Um, and so that's that's why it's so important to preach it to yourself, you know. Exactly, and not I only not that, only get it from uh, preachers or other people, uh, but to preach it to yourself. Would you agree? Uh, I mean, is it a general principle that the more you hear something, the more you start to believe it? The more you read something, the more you start to believe it. Or is it just a? Is that just true of the gospel? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Like. It's probably true in general, but I mean, I think that can be used to brainwash yourself. I mean, just yeah. hearing something over and over again doesn't make it true. It could could be right. false, something you're listening right, right. to over and over again. And, and that's, and that's, um, but I, I think agree. I agree with you that if you heard it over and over again, you you might be more inclined to believe it more and more the more you hear it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Even with even with false principles, I, I think it's it's. Uh, our minds are susceptible to believing things that uh, that we hear over and over. And the truth is that one of the things that we hear over and over as we're growing up uh, are, are descriptions about ourselves. You know, well, you're this way. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're good at, you're, you're, you're a smart kid, you know, or you're not very good at singing or you're not a very good artist or you are, um, you know, uh, you're one day you're going to be somebody or mm -hmm. uh, why can't you be more like your sister? You know, I mean, and the more you hear those things, whether they are true about you or not, uh, you'll, you'll believe them. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and what does that do to you? If you constantly hear negative things about yourself from mm -hmm. people around you and, or from yourself, you tell yourself negative things. I mean, where mm -hmm. Where do you end up in your mindset as far and your and your worldview of what you're capable of and what you can accomplish? What are your yeah. thoughts on? I mean, is that, would you do, you do you see a a real connection with you know negative affirmations if they can be negative negative negation mm -hmm. I don't know how to say <laughs> nefermations. Um, I mean, I think it's possible to shrug off things that people say. It depends on who it's coming from and how much you trust them and how much you how much stock you put in in their opinion um it's probably harder for young kids to shrug off things that other people say but i think with maturity comes a sense of um you know being able to ignore something that someone says if if you don't value their opinion um sure. so I, mean, I, I think there are i think there are things that the world says about us all the time that that we don't necessarily internalize um but but that would come with a certain level of maturity, I think. And I mean, I don't know, even, even those things probably can influence us in subtle ways or ways we don't realize, but, um, well, and would, if, when you were an impressionable child and you were not able to shrug off what your parents said about you or what others said, how hard is that later to, yeah. How deeply were those things yeah. internalized? Yeah. And so then when you, throughout your life, even when you are an adult who can shrug things off, how quickly do you, because of your own personal confirmation bias, accept negative things when people say negative things about you? Uh, because that's what you've always said about yourself too. I, yeah, I know I have a terrible temper, you know? Yeah, I know I, um, just, I, I'm, I'm not a very good looking person or whatever. My jokes don't have, they're not very funny or I talk too much or, I mean, just all kinds of things. I'm a I'm a bossy person. I always take charge mm -hmm. of everything, you know, and nobody likes that. And and those things become internalized when you are a child, and mm -hmm. and then you say them to yourself throughout life, and they may be true. You you've got some of those propensities, but that's not who you are. Mm -hmm. Not and you can change that. Right? Mm. Or are you that way? I mean, well, and now we're getting kind of getting into like where the, the, the meat is on the bone here, right? Because, and, and this is where I think you and I, so in principle, 
um, affirmations work, right? Um, the content of the affirmations I think is, is important. And this is maybe the area where I disagree with you the most is the kind of things that you choose to preach to yourself. Wow, because okay. I think that they're opposed to the things you preach to yourself are, are, just diametrically opposed to the kinds of things I would preach to myself. And that's because of our two different well, worldviews, right? Okay. Then, so um, if we can agree that affirmations or saying something over and over to yourself, suggesting something to yourself, whether it be a gospel principle or a principle mm -hmm. about who you are, a, a positive or a negative um, statement about who you are, that saying that over and over in your mind, uh, can and does likely have a significant effect on your personal beliefs. Can we agree on that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. And then that, um, I just want to, as long as we can agree on this one other point, we can move on to, to examining what it is we're preaching to ourselves in just a second. But what, can we also agree that, um, that we very often, without being aware of what, we're doing and what our mind is telling us that many of us speak negative things to ourselves all the time is that we haven't really gotten into that but I think a lot of people have the propensity to think I'm just not enough I won't be enough until something happens or whatever I need somebody to accept me and we, yeah. we talk to ourselves negatively is, is that also something that you feel is probably true yeah Okay, so then the last thing on this would be, so then it would help us to find appropriate positive things to say to ourselves intentionally and to be aware of, and then we would have stronger, firmer beliefs in who we are and in, our, and in, re, and in reality, so long as they're true, right? Sure. Yeah, I would ask, how, okay. how does it help you to think positively about yourself? What, what outcome are you... Um, Maybe I don't know what the, the right Well, is again, asked, if but. I'm thinking negatively about myself, um, I, I'm more easily depressed. Um, I, okay. I more easily uh, give up on things because I just say, ah, that's just me. That's the kind of person I am. Um, I, don't, I don't show up as my best self, as who I could be because I don't recognize myself as my best self. But if I tell myself, no, I am this kind of person, I am, I, I'm a man of integrity. I keep my word. I, um, I, I, I'm a hard worker. I'm a, I'm a good lover. I'm a good father. Then I show up that way. I show up as a good father and a good lover and a hard worker because I believe that about myself. But if I don't believe that about myself and I say, I'm lazy, uh, I am, I'm selfish. Uh, I just know I'm, I'm selfish in this relationship. Well, then I'm going to show up as a selfish person in the relationship, you know, and I'm going to get those kinds of results because that's what I believe about myself. And, and see, this is kind of where it bleeds into the law of attraction for me is right. like you, you believe that by believing those things about yourself, it's going to change reality. It's going to change. It's going to change how I act. It's just going to change your own behavior, which you know, all thought leads to behavior. So, so maybe oh, this yeah. has nothing to do with the law of attraction for you. This is just about like a psychological thing. Like if I'm thinking these things in my mind, that's going to change the way I act. It's not going to change anything else in the universe necessarily. It might, but it doesn't well, have like, to. No, let's we, talk we, about we, that. We can separate, we can separate yeah. those two things. Is that, is that's that, where we're going. I, I think we agree that the statements you speak to yourself, positive or negative, have an mm -hmm. effect on who you are and how you act, right? Sure. And do you, would you also agree that your thoughts and your beliefs drive how you show up, how you act, how you demonstrate, you know, just mm -hmm. the, the, your words, your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions have created like just who you are. Is that, I mean, sure. that is who you Okay. So yeah. we're on the same page with that. So what I, so what I'm sensing um, uh, that you're, real beef is it's not with affirmations it's it's what i choose to say to myself in those affirmations because you don't believe in some of those things and the, oh, uh, it just, okay, a okay. phrase popped into my head as a man thinketh which is the yes. title of a book by james allen but is that a bible verse or is that just a title of his book um good question i feel like it's a it's an old <laughs> the phrase definition. just popped in my and, yeah, mind and i don't know uh, be yeah. something we if, if you're able to look it up quick uh, let us know but um, yeah, 
I mean, I, I quoted in my affirmations video um, at least some Latter-day Saint theology uh, that was specific to the idea that how could we be anything other than what our thoughts and our actions and our choices have created, right. have, have made us to be. That we're the result of everything we've been thinking and, and doing for the last decade or year or for our entire life. And so if we constantly think of ourselves negatively, we are going to be that negative person. And so changing yourself for the future requires, and again, this is just changing yourself for a second. We're not talking about changing anything else. Changing yourself for the future requires you to uh, reprogram your beliefs and your thoughts because you are going to be in the future the result of your future, of your current and future beliefs and thoughts. And so then affirmations becomes a tool for reprogramming, for saying, okay, well, I believe this, I believe that. And if you say this over and over, I am this, I am this, I am good, I am strong, I'm in, I have integrity, I work hard, then you will begin to believe it. And I, and I want to be very clear that you don't believe it for the first, usually for me in my experience, for the first 30 days or so of saying this stuff to yourself. You just don't believe it. You're like, I'm lying to myself. This isn't true. I'm not really that good of a person. You know. But then after about 30 days of saying it to yourself over and over, you start saying, well, oh, yeah, maybe I am. I see some things in some areas where maybe I am. And then about 60, 90 days, you're like, oh, I'm totally that way. Because now you are. You're like, you've been following this. You've been programming yourself. And you've been showing up in this way that now you can totally accept yourself as this better, more enhanced person. And so you expect yourself to be that. When you get in a lovemaking relationship with your spouse, you expect yourself to be this selfless and loving and seductive person. And you expect yourself when you show up at business to be a, a, a think, you know, someone who thinks outside the box and creatively and to have integrity because that's what you tell yourself you are. So, mm. okay, I, I think that, that, we can, that we can agree on what affirmations do uh, to, to program your, your mind and, and then how you show up. But what we're disagreeing on right now is what you say uh, and, and what you believe and specifically, I think you have, maybe you have an impression that I think that this somehow mystically changes the world in a way other than just, you know, uh, what is Michael Jackson saying? Uh, you know, if you want to change the world, change yourself. What is the man? And I'm starting with the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I'm, I'm, I think I'm starting to see more and more how you can separate those things in your mind. So I don't even know if we have to go down that road. Um, because I, I think I can agree with you that just psychologically, like saying what I say in my mind leads to the actions that I, that, that, that I do, you know? Um, but I, I think I disagree with some of what you just said too, about like, um, because I, I don't think that I can reprogram myself. I don't believe I can do that. I think that I, my nature is what it is. And that the only thing that's going to change my nature is God um, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit um, acting in me to change my, my heart of stone for a, for a heart of flesh or well, to, well, would... um, to, to open my mind and, and change my thoughts and change my heart. That's what's going to change me. And so that's why it, my version of affirmations is that I preach the gospel to myself more and more. Um, I don't tell myself things like I'm a good person or I'm a good, you know, because I, I don't, I, A, I think those things are, are lies, if I can be blunt. I, I don't mean that rudely. Um, well, I don't think one of my affirmations, by the way, is I'm a good person. But anyway, because <laughs> I agree. Well, I, there, sorry, I did generalize God. <laughs> right. I did generalize what you, the statements that you made, your statements were yeah. a lot more specific, but, but, um, I don't, I don't think that it helps any of us to preach something to ourselves. That's not true. Um, and, and if I were to preach to myself things like, um, like the kinds of things that you were just saying, um, I, I feel like I would be lying to myself and I, I you and I've probably discussed this in the past, but I, I, I don't like self-esteem posters. I don't like, um, I don't like participation trophies. I don't like, um, I don't know, there's a culture, I think, and, and a lot of it comes from like the, the, the um, psychology, you know, industry or whatever, right? That, um, you know, what we need as, as humans is just more self-esteem. You know, we need to feel better about ourselves. And um, I, I don't think that's true. I disagree with that. That's antith antithetical to my worldview. Um, I think what people need is to worship God more and more and to give God glory more and more. Um, 
And so the, the sorts of things that I would preach to myself are, um, I would actually preach to myself that I am a sinner, but, you know, and it's, and I think you're right. I think if you dwell on your sin, if you dwell on the fact that you're a, a bad person, that is, that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, and, and that but is crucial, right? Yes, I'm a sinner, but Jesus died for me on the cross, right? Um, and that empowers me to live my life in a different way. Um, I, don't, I don't have to be what I am by nature. There's power uh, from God. There's a righteousness from God that, that allows me to act a different way and empowers me to act a different way. And in that strength, in that power, yes, I can show up and be a different person in, in uh, places where I go and people that I interact with. Um, and that's the distinction. That's the, that's, the, that's the crux of it for me. And what's different about your worldview and my worldview is, is not in the fact that I would preach to myself something, but it's in what I would preach to myself, the content of the message that I would preach to myself. Does that make sense? I, yeah, absolutely. I, I want to clarify, though, that I, you know, as I struggle, I told you that when I start saying these positive things to myself for the first 30 days, I don't believe them. And mm -hmm. um, the, and I, and I, and I'm having a logical internal discussion with myself about why should I believe these things? How are these possibly true? And I want mm -hmm. you to be aware that absolutely one of the things that convinces me that these things are true is because of my belief and faith in Jesus Christ. It's because mm -hmm. I'm partnered with Jesus Christ. I'm married to him because, uh, because he is all these things. And because mm -hmm. he is all these things and he lends to me his righteousness or he, he lends to me his, his ability to create. He lends to me because we're partnered together, because we're working together, because I'm seeking daily intuition from him and, and my guidance from him that when I say uh, the affirmations to myself, I am able to believe them because mm -hmm. I believe that is what Jesus Christ wants me to believe in because I believe I'm, I'm with him and I'm connected with him. And when I say, when I say the words, I am, and then follow it up with something good, mm -hmm. I'm actually saying in my mindset, I'm saying God is because I am mm -hmm. is God's name. And when I say, and, and if I say I'm stupid, which I might say to myself, uh, or you might hear somebody say to themselves, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. When you say that, mm -hmm. what you've just said is, God is so stupid. Because you've just taken his name, I am, and followed it with, is so stupid. And, um, and, and, and meanwhile, instead, if we should be saying, I am so smart, I am very is stupid. That, is that just a grammatical language construct for you? Or, or is that deeply tied to your worldview that you are the offspring of God and that you are a God yourself? And so are, are, are you saying that when you say that you're dumb, you're calling all divine beings dumb? I, I don't know that I would put it that way, no. I, I, it's a grammatical construct. It's literally just, I used God's name. I believe that, that it dumb. is God's name, and I believe that God made it his name for multiple reasons, one of which being because he is, he exists, he, he, he just is, but also because he knows that we use that phrase all the time. And we say, I am, I am, and that's his name. And, um, I, and, and, and because we are his children, yes, it's connected to my worldview that we're his children. And that when we speak the words, I am, it's a powerful thing. What, what follows is a prophecy. It, what follows the words, I am, is a truth. Um, it's something that, that you, that, that it's, it's about your beliefs. It's a truth of your beliefs. It doesn't mean it is true, but it, it reveals your belief about something. When you, uh, specifically about God and about God's power. If you don't believe that you can be saved, if you think you are trash, garbage, that nobody would love you, if they really knew you and all of the sins that you had, that you're worthless, if you truly believe that, that like I say, that, that if somebody really deeply knew you, they would not love you and you could not be saved, then, then you're going to have a hard time being saved because you won't believe in Jesus Christ's ability to save you nor in his love for you. And uh, so when you say, I am, and then follow but, but it with a bunch see, of... See, that's, that's the gospel, though, that he loved us while we were still sinners. I know. He didn't love me because I'm, because I'm something special. But this is, um, where I, this is where our belief systems clash, because I do believe that we have agency to accept that. He does, you're right. He does love us 
in our sinful state and in our, because we're, we have infinite worth to him, like the baby who does nothing but cry and poop and, and, and nothing, like the dollar bill, the $20 bill that has poop on it, the value is the same, okay? We have infinite worth and nothing we do, he, my point is that he loves us, yes. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice to accept his love and to have faith in his ability to save us. And if we choose to repeat and program ourselves negatively over and over, or you know, I want to step back for just a second because a minute ago you said that you don't believe we can program ourselves, that God has to do that. And yet I think that was in a little bit of a contradiction of something we had established earlier that we both agreed. And that is that people can speak to us negative things throughout our life. And as children, we can accept those things for ourselves. I don't think that was God programming us. But obviously, mm -hmm. other people can and do program us by telling us what they think of us. And then we accept that. And, we have a, and my point is that we have a choice to accept that either we are too flawed to be loved and saved. Or that, no, God is good enough and God does love us and we have enough infinite worth because, you know, because we're children of God that we can say, I am more than enough. And because of the atonement of Jesus Christ, we can say, I am loved. I am adored. I am more than enough. I, am, I do have infinite worth and, and I can be saved. I have faith in Jesus Christ's atonement that I can be saved and I, um, and I want it because, because I love myself too. I, I, I'm, I'm worthy. I want, I want that. I, if I hate myself, I don't want to live with myself forever, you know, nor do I think God wants to live with me. But if I learn to, so anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I think we did establish that, that you can be programmed by your thoughts, your words, and, and by other people's thoughts or words. And so yeah. let's choose to accept a positive program. And we're running short on our time, but I want to give you the last thought on that. As far as that for me. And I think, uh, I just want to say before I turn it over for the last thought, I encourage you to go ahead and watch the video that's on my College Tax Refunds channel right now about, uh, uh, about the law of attraction more in general and how that really works. And then let's do another video that gets more into the worldview. This one was more focused on just whether or not affirmations can program us, mm -hmm. our little chat here. And I feel like we've agreed on that, but we need to dive more deeply into the what we're programming and, 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 and the view of whether, uh, I, whether my programming has anything to do with yeah. the world out there. But go ahead now and, and wrap I it mean, up. I think us. I can clarify that by just, you know, saying I believe in original sin. I believe that the, the inclinations of our thoughts and our hearts at all times is towards sin and toward negative things. So I think you're right. We can and do program ourselves. We allow the world to program us to, to think negative thoughts about ourselves. Um, but, I, but I don't, I don't agree with you that we have the power in and of ourselves to, to, to change that. Um, I think that only the gospel can do that. Only God can do that um, because we're so far gone that we, that we need, you know, if, if the doctor came in and said, you know, if you were sitting in the doctor's office, you had like a, a mark on your foot or something, you know, and, and uh, the doctor comes in and says, um, okay, I'm going to give you these two pills. You take these and then call me back in the morning. It should clear itself up. Right. Um, you would think, oh, well, this mark on my foot must not have been a very big deal then, right? But if, you, but if the doctor in Sid comes in and says, uh, hey, Steve, I'm really sorry, but it looks like we're going to have to amputate everything from your hip down, you know? Holy cow, <laughs> this thing on my foot must have been a way bigger deal than I thought, right? And Christ comes to us and says that we have to die, or he had to die, right, in order to save us, which which says something about the, the problem, right? It's, this, is not a, this is not a small problem. It's not a a small inconvenience, right? Um, sin is a huge problem. And um, I just, I don't think we can overcome that problem by just reprogramming ourselves. Um, oh, I that, that I think is the, that I think is the, um, the clarification I would make is that yes, we, we can program ourselves with negative thoughts, but it's, but it's, it's, it's stopping a, a, a hundred ton train, you know, to program ourselves the other way without God. Um, with God, all things are possible, right? Not with us, though. Um, and so that's, I think, what we need to preach to ourselves is, is something objective, something outside of ourselves that happened in time, and that's the atonement, right? Um, and that's, that's the thing that's going to change us. Um, so that, so I don't know. I don't know if, if, 
if we've agreed more than we've disagreed in this conversation. Well, um, we still I, have I hope it's things. been I hope it's been a constructive conversation. Though. I've enjoyed it. I um, think it's been great, and I, I I really appreciate your time. I want to talk again if we can do it tomorrow. That would be fantastic. But whenever, as soon as we can, and um, I think, yeah, I yeah, we we still have some discussion to do on this. I think so. Appreciate it.